Is this another failure? That is the question surrounding Dream Chaser. Once seen as a promising rival to Starliner and SpaceX's Dragon, the space plane has faced repeated delays and setbacks. Despite high expectations, it has yet to fly. What is behind these issues, and could Dream Chaser become NASA's next major disappointment? Let's find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. The retirement of the space shuttle marked the end of a defining era in American aerospace, leaving a significant gap in the nation's spaceflight capabilities. For more than a decade, the burden of transporting cargo and crew to the International Space Station fell primarily on SpaceX's Dragon. Thankfully, Dragon has risen to the challenge, proving itself as a reliable and cost-effective vehicle. However, many still long for the versatility and runway landing elegance of a shuttle-style spacecraft. The vision lives on in Dream Chaser, the winged space plane developed by Sierra Space. Dream Chaser is designed to launch atop a conventional rocket and return to Earth by gliding onto a runway. Its potential to deliver cargo and crew to the ISS and future orbital stations has made it a highly anticipated addition to America's growing fleet of spacecraft. But despite the excitement surrounding it, Dream Chaser has yet to fly. Its maiden launch has been delayed repeatedly, with years slipping by since its original target date. So what exactly has held it back? The primary issue is a scheduling mismatch with its launch vehicle, the Vulcan Centaur, developed by ULA. Dream Chaser was initially assigned to fly on the second mission of Vulcan, which itself has suffered extensive delays. Vulcan's debut flight was postponed for years and finally occurred in January of 2024. This launch delay had a domino effect, slowing down Dream Chaser's own development timeline. Sierra Space completed the first flight-ready Dream Chaser, named Tenacity, in November of 2023. At that time, the space plane was tentatively scheduled to fly in April of last year. However, even as Vulcan became flight-ready, Dream Chaser required additional time for testing. While these tests were largely successful, they ran longer than expected. Meanwhile, Vulcan faced its own pressure. ULA was racing to secure national security certifications so it could compete for government and military payload contracts, a market increasingly dominated by SpaceX. To meet this goal, ULA opted to prioritize a second Vulcan mission in October of 2024 that carried a test payload instead of Dream Chaser. Ironically, by then, Dream Chaser appeared to be ready. However, Vulcan either lacked the hardware or launch slot to accommodate it. Further complicating matters, Vulcan has encountered problems with its solid rocket boosters. These have prevented it from moving forward with a third mission, keeping Dream Chaser grounded even longer. Even if Vulcan becomes fully operational, the launch window for Dream Chaser remains highly unpredictable. Vulcan is expected to, to carry a heavy backlog of military payloads from previous years under Phase 2 of the Space Force's National Security Space Launch Program. On top of that, it has been contracted to support Amazon's Kuiper satellite constellation, committing it to at least 18 launches. As a result, Dream Chaser's chances of finding a timely launch slot continue to shrink. At the heart of the issue lies a risky partnership between two delayed systems. Both Dream Chaser and Vulcan were new programs with ambitious timelines. However, Vulcan's development was treated with greater urgency due to national security demands. Vulcan could not afford to wait for Dream Chaser, yet it still lacks the rapid cadence needed to offer flexibility. These scheduling and logistical challenges have stalled Dream Chaser's debut flight and raised questions about its long-term viability. The space plane was envisioned to be more than just a one-off prototype. Sierra Space has already planned a second cargo variant named Reverence, followed by a crewed version capable of transporting astronauts. Each delay pushes those future milestones further into the distance. That makes Dream Chaser's first mission critically important. Whether it flies in 2025 or later, it'll serve as a demonstration of the spacecraft's capabilities and determine its prospects as a cargo and crew solution. Currently, NASA relies on three spacecraft to support the ISS, which includes SpaceX's Dragon, Boeing's Starliner, and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus. Dragon remains the most reliable, having successfully completed numerous crewed and cargo missions. Starliner, by contrast, has experienced a series of setbacks. Following its uncrewed cargo flight in 2022, every subsequent mission, including the recent CFT-1 crewed mission, has faced technical issues. The spacecraft is not expected to return to flight before early 2026. 
Cygnus has also suffered hardware issues, particularly during the NG-22 mission, which disrupted its launch schedule. This leaves NASA in a precarious position, overly reliant on Dragon and searching for alternatives. Dream Chaser has the potential to fill a valuable role in NASA's fleet. With its runway landing capability, modular design, and mission flexibility, it offers unique advantages. However, continued delays are shrinking its window of opportunity, not just for Sierra Space, but for the ISS itself. NASA's proposed budget cuts may reduce the number of remaining ISS missions. If that happens, Dragon will likely remain the priority, limiting chances for Dream Chaser to demonstrate its value. Looking beyond the ISS, Dream Chaser is also intended to serve future commercial stations like Orbital Reef, a project led by Blue Origin and Sierra Space. But with slow progress on that front, the pressure to fly now is even greater. In short, Dream Chaser holds promise, but its future is uncertain. Delays from Sierra Space and ULA have raised doubts. Still, a successful first flight could revive interest in winged spaceflight and secure Dream Chaser's place in the next phase of exploration. Do you think Dream Chaser will launch this year? Let me know with a yes or a no in the comment section down below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to stay updated on SpaceX and beyond. The Dream Chaser space plane has captured the imagination of space enthusiasts and industry professionals alike, offering a unique combination of aerodynamic elegance and technical capability. Designed by Sierra Space to fulfill cargo and eventually crew missions to low Earth orbit, Dream Chaser is a shuttle-inspired vehicle that can take off atop a traditional launch vehicle and glide back down to Earth for a runway landing. However, despite its promising design, Dream Chaser has faced years of delay, mostly due to its launch provider, ULA's Vulcan Centaur. Now for the critical question, is there a solution for Dream Chaser? The most practical path forward would be for Sierra Space to select a new launch vehicle, one that is more reliable and available. Dream Chaser was designed to be compatible with multiple launch platforms, giving it the flexibility to switch providers if needed. The right choice could determine whether this space plane finally flies or continues to sit on the ground. The most obvious candidate would be SpaceX's Falcon 9, the most frequently launched and proven rocket in the world today. Falcon 9 offers reliability, high cadence, and cost efficiency. Partnering with SpaceX could give Sierra Space the flexibility to launch Dream Chaser when needed, rather than waiting in a long queue behind high-priority missions like national security payloads. However, technical challenges emerge when we analyze the compatibility between Falcon 9 and Dream Chaser. Dream Chaser has a dry mass of around 9 tons, and when paired with the Shooting Star cargo module, brings the total payload to over 14 tons. While Falcon 9 is capable of lifting this weight to low Earth orbit, it would require an expendable configuration to meet the performance requirements. The real concern, though, is size. Even with its wings folded, Dream Chaser requires a payload bay with a diameter of 5 meters to fit properly. Falcon 9's fairing has an internal diameter of just 4.6 meters, which makes it physically impossible to accommodate Dream Chaser as it is currently designed. Additionally, the combined length of Dream Chaser and its cargo module is 13.6 meters, while Falcon 9's fairing offers only 13.1 meters of usable length. This dimensional incompatibility rules out Falcon 9 as a viable option, even though it would have been otherwise the most flexible and reliable choice. Which brings us to the Falcon Heavy, the Falcon 9's more powerful sibling. While the core design is similar, Falcon Heavy is often equipped with enhanced capabilities and has successfully handled more demanding missions. More importantly, it supports a larger payload fairing that could be upgraded further to accommodate the dimensions of Dream Chaser and its Shooting Star module. Falcon Heavy could realistically be the ideal launch vehicle, though it is not flown as frequently as Falcon 9. It also offers more flexibility than Vulcan and already has a proven flight history. Dream Chaser will likely only launch a few times in the near term, so Falcon Heavy's limited cadence would not necessarily be a problem. A partnership with SpaceX for Falcon Heavy launches could open up a realistic and achievable path for Dream Chaser to finally reach orbit. Another possible option would be Blue Origin's New Glenn. As Sierra Space's partner in the Orbital Reef project, Blue Origin presents an attractive in-house synergy. New Glenn is designed to carry large payloads, and its fairing is more than capable of accommodating Dream Chaser. However, New Glenn itself is in a similar situation as Vulcan. 
It completed its first test flight early this year, but its schedule is still highly uncertain. It also faces a backlog of contracts with NASA and the military, making it another congested platform that Dream Chaser might struggle to get priority on. An alternative idea that has recently been floated involves Sierra Space acquiring ULA, which would give them full control over the Vulcan launch platform. While this would solve the scheduling conflict from a business perspective, it poses significant technical and logistical challenges. Sierra Space would need time and expertise to understand, operate, and manage Vulcan's complex systems, and that would divert resources from the company's core focus, which is developing and operating Dream Chaser. While each launch option comes with its own benefits and drawbacks, Falcon Heavy appears to be the most balanced solution in the current landscape. It offers greater flexibility, fits the physical requirements of Dream Chaser, and has an established flight record. A partnership with SpaceX would not only benefit Sierra Space, but also contribute positively to NASA's goals by increasing launch redundancy and spacecraft diversity. Of course, Dream Chaser still faces questions about its long-term potential. Some have asked whether it will suffer the same fate as Boeing's Starliner, which has experienced repeated delays and hardware issues. However, the comparison may not be entirely fair. Dream Chaser has shown more consistent reliability during its ground tests and development. Its space plane design gives it several advantages over traditional capsule-based spacecraft. It can land gently on a runway like an airplane, which is especially valuable for returning delicate scientific instruments or experiments. It can also be quickly refurbished and relaunched, offering a turnaround time that is faster than water recovery systems used by Dragon or parachute landings used by Starliner. Additionally, Dream Chaser's smooth runway recovery reduces the strain on both the vehicle and its contents, potentially leading to longer service life and more mission flexibility. These advantages put Dream Chaser in a unique position. If Sierra Space can solve the issue of launch vehicle compatibility, the space plane could quickly become one of the most valuable assets in the commercial space industry. Its ability to perform gentle landings, carry sensitive cargo, and eventually transport astronauts make it a multi-role spacecraft with long-term potential. Looking forward, Dream Chaser could play a major role not only with the ISS, but also with future private space stations like Orbital Reef. The only question is whether the pieces will come together in time to take advantage of those opportunities. In conclusion, the solution for Dream Chaser lies primarily in securing a compatible, reliable, and available launch platform. Falcon Heavy stands out as the best current option. If Sierra Space can forge a new partnership with SpaceX and address the remaining technical hurdles, Dream Chaser would finally be able to demonstrate its full potential. The window of opportunity is narrow, but with the right moves, the space plane could yet take flight and fulfill its role as a next-gen spacecraft for NASA, private industry, and beyond. Will 2025 be the year Dream Chaser finally launches? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to continue following the journey of Dream Chaser and the exciting developments across the spaceflight industry. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.